think through the consequences. Don't tell me that by voting green, oh, I have clean hands or I have no responsibility for what comes next. That's bullshit. We're all citizens of this country. We're all going to have to live with the consequences of the decision that happens, whether it ends up being Harris or Trump. That's all I'm asking. Let's have an honest debate. And, and right there, he said it best. There's no such thing as clean hands. There's no such thing as as being able to sleep well at night and 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 having you know no worries or or whatsoever like no like i said before if you don't f with politics politics will still f with you so like we discussed in other videos um and, and at some point i would love to not have to continue to have this conversation but as long as we're you know uh, getting closer to election day and the topic is still going, I, I still feel the need to to try to at least educate the best way I can. Um, I know sometimes I could be a little little uh, uh, hot-headed and, and saying some things that may come off extremely aggressive, but I just want people to understand that I am passionate about what I say, and if I feel like I need to try to explain to you and try to push you to make at least a very informed decision, I feel like I need to do that. You know what I'm saying? So just bear with me. But, you know, just, just going over some of the basics, I know Trump and Harris, the Democrat uh, in the Republican Party, they're both trash. We get that. You will not get an argument from me. But we have to be honest in this moment right now, less than two weeks, one of these individuals is going to be president. Unfortunately, it's not going to be Jill Stein. OK, as, as much as I would love to see that just mathematically, it is not going to happen. Jesus himself probably wouldn't be able to sway the election to go into Jill Stein favor. OK, and, and Jesus rose from the from the grave. So, so I'm just saying, you know, um, but. In the moment. We have two choices and unfortunately, one of them is more toxic than the other. And, it, and, and not just in regards to uh, uh, the Israel Palestine uh, situation, I'm talking about just in overall policy, just any anything. There's nothing that Trump would do better in a positive uh, a positive way for the average American. Nothing on paper. Trump's policies, Harris policies don't even come close. So let's let's go ahead and uh, listen to uh, two of my favorite people like these two people. I, I can't pass this opportunity to at least in my way, join the conversation with these two people here. Mark Lamont Hill, uh, which I read both his books uh, this past couple months, amazing. And Mehdi Hassan, which I am, I, I, I feel sorry for myself because I just found him recently within like maybe six months ago. So um, a, a, a beautiful, amazing person. So let's go ahead and hear them talking to talk about um, Green Party voting and just overall you know, uh, uh, Harris and Trump, uh, uh, presidency and what that would look like. So that is quite scary. Uh, the thing, one of the things you said earlier before we go is, you know, this idea of blame and who gets blamed Yeah. if, uh, if, if, uh, Kamala Harris loses or if Trump loses, whatever, right. Yes. You know, do we blame the black person? Do we blame the Muslim? Do we blame Trump says he's going to blame the Jews, but that didn't make more than half a day headline. Again, mind boggling. I covered it Imagine here. Imagine if Harris said that. Imagine yeah. if Harris said that or Biden said that. It's mind boggling to me. But I feel like there are. And, and, and it is kind of weird how Trump has said the most craziest things that he's going to use the military against American citizens. Um, he's going to blame Jewish people. OK, everyone wants to be extremely sensitive over Jewish people, and he said that he's going to blame the <laughs> the American Jews if he doesn't win. No, 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 not not blaming him or his policies or what he's failed at, but he's going to blame Jewish people. And, and like they said, if if Kamala Harris said, "I'm going to blame black people if I don't win," 
we would literally like tear up our vote our, our ballots and just be like we're not voting like can you just imagine for a second which is crazy so it's an obvious double standard you have to be living under a rock eating crayons for your entire life if you don't see that it's a clear double uh, standard when it comes to trump and harris obviously people out here who say that if kamala loses just like they said when hillary lost that it's the third party candidate that it's butch ware and jill stein's fault that it's cornell west's fault that it's claudia de la cruz's fault my issue and i'm a i'm a green party member uh, yeah. for uh, two and a half decades now i <laughs> voted for jill stein in pennsylvania you're going to murder me you know um i don't regret in 2016. that. in 2016 i voted for jill stein in you have no regrets no i don't i, I don't <laughs> um and i'll tell you why i'll tell you why but but i but i, I want to hear you more okay. on this um but I, but I absolutely voted for jill stein i thought it was the right choice i thought it was the principal choice i i campaigned for jill stein i went around the country for jill stein um and i felt like instead of saying hillary clinton should have run a better campaign hillary clinton should have addressed black voters hillary clinton should spend a little less time in florida which she was obsessed with toward the end and not these other places Instead yeah. of saying Hillary Clinton wasn't a good candidate or the Democrats stole from Bernie, none of that stuff comes up. It's yeah. just those 50,000 people that voted green that might have otherwise stayed home, that might have yes. otherwise voted Trump, that might have otherwise yep. done these other things. You're the fault of American democracy. There's not a day that goes by that me, uh, Eddie Glaude, I don't know Susan Sarandon, but I would imagine her team yeah, yeah. tag with me all the time. Every time something bad happens, they say, are you happy now, Mark? You're responsible for abortion. You're responsible for no affirmative action. It, it's mind boggling how we think about this. So I think it's unfair. So I, I, here's my response to go back to how I started the show. I walk a time. I, ju just to add in my two cents, I would personally blame the third party voters. Uh, uh, unless you can show me mathematically like you know, and I'm just using numbers here, 20,000 people uh, voted for Jill Stein in these swing states, but uh, Hillary lost by 50,000. So no matter if the Green would have voted for Hillary, she still would have lost. Now, if it's something like that, then okay, whatever. But if it mathematically proves that, you know, she, uh, um, Jill Stein took uh, potential votes from Hillary, then yeah like it, it would be the the voters fault right like it's you decide who to vote for bad bad candidate or not like you still make that decision so it would be the decision makers fault right so i mean you know you just stand on your business you know tight rope on this stuff people it makes me unpopular with some folks yes but i try and walk and chew gum at the same time i believe Hillary Clinton was a bad candidate in 2016. She ran a bad campaign. She didn't visit Wisconsin. She said some awful stuff. And she wasn't the greatest candidate to take on Donald Trump in what was supposed to be a change year. No one wanted a Clinton. Uh, having said all that, by the way, she won the popular vote, to be fair to her. In any other country, we would be finishing a second Clinton term, right? In any other country in the world. Yeah. Uh, if we didn't, for, if not for the electoral vote, we shouldn't forget that fact, right? She won whatever it was, millions more votes. Yeah. But but for the system we had, she ran a bad campaign. Knowing the Electoral College, she should have put more attention in these swing states. And I agree with that. Having said that, I also understand why liberals get mad and say, when it was such a consequential race and such a clear choice, how could you have the Greens saying they're all the same? And I interviewed Jill Stein in 2016, before I interviewed her and Butch recently. I interviewed her in 2016 for our show, Upfront. I'm going to call it our show. Upfront in 2016. And I said to her at the time, and I went back and I watched the clip recently, I said, if there is a swing voter in Pennsylvania who says, Jill Stein, you can't, you know, you can't win the presidency. I support the green goals. But in this state, who should I pick, Clinton or Trump? Would you say go to Clinton? She said, no, they're both the same. They're both as bad. One's, there's no lesser evils. That for me is a problem. That's what I'm going to call it. I'm not mm. going to blame green voters or say greens cost election. But I do think it's disingenuous for third party candidates to say, well, they're all the same when they're not. And actually, let's take Cornell as an example. Cornell is running this time, and I'm good friends with Cornell. I disagree with uh, his position this time around. <clears throat> but Cornell also in 2020 did not run as a third party candidate. And he said, I'm not going to run as a third party candidate, and I'm not going to support the Greens because we need an anti fascist alliance.
Mm. Right. We need an anti-fascist alliance. He said neoliberalism is bad. Fascism is worse. Right. I liked that, Cornell. That is my own view. Right. But so, he, I, I think thought, he would say when I saw Joe Biden these last four years, it turns out they're pretty fascist, too. Well, but hold on. Pre-October 7th. Joe Biden ran the most center-left president since LBJ on a domestic level. That's just That's a fact. It, it, it's not a logical inconsistency from Cornell. He's saying true. They, 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 they well, it is a logical wrong. inconsistency. We, we know, Cornell's not here to defend himself, but I've asked him this on my show. Yeah. If you think Trump was bad in twenty, he's much worse in twenty-four. So that I don't get like Donald Trump of twenty twenty-four is and, more fascistic, and, more violent, more racist, more threatening, more unhinged. And I've I've read every single Cornell West book. I love Cornell West. Like he would be like the top five people I would want to meet before I die. Um, and yes, Cornell West has said that the Democratic Party is fascist, but when he compares it to the Republican Party, um, it's it's night and day. And he will tell you that. So, you know, just, just to be fair, and, and I wish, you know, I would have found a quote, but I, I'm just now thinking of that now. But um, he does make a distinction between the two, but you know, uh, like fascism on, on a spectrum, I, I guess you could say, um, neither is good, but like, let's not kid ourselves and think they're both the same, which they're not. Um, so there well, you unstable go. the Donald Trump in 2020 and 2016. That's just an objective reality. But to go back to my point about like the blame, I don't believe in the blame game. I did a long video for Zateo. People can watch it. I think a million people watched it on Instagram where I said, direct to camera to Vice President Harris, if you lose, don't you dare blame Muslims in Michigan. Yes, I love Look in the video. mirror. Look in the mirror. It's on you. You've had every chance to do the bare minimum. Nobody's asking you to abandon support for Israel. Nobody's asking you to support ICC warrants against Netanyahu. We're just saying, put some conditions on aid. Make a ceasefire happen with the leverage you have. Put a Palestinian on stage at the DNC, right? These yeah. are kind of minimum basic. If you can't even do that, then it's your it's on you when you lose the Muslim vote in Michigan, right? So I'm very clear about where the blame lies. Politicians have the blame. Nobody nobody's owed a vote, right? They don't own any votes. I'm with you on that. Having said that, again, walk and chew gum. Sorry to be the you know guy. voters also have to take responsibility. Too many people tell me, Mark. Well, you know what? Doesn't matter to me. I'm voting green. Uh, whoever wins, nothing to do with me. Well, actually it is, right? Because you still live in the United States of America. You're yeah. still going to want to organize and be active over the next four years. You still care about Palestinians even after November 2024. So actually you do need to give a shit about what's coming down the line. And, and Phil DeFranco said it best. I, I'm not going to add like I, I invented the quote. You know, I got to give props when props is due. But he said it best. He said, you may not fuck with politics, but politics will fuck with you. You know, so... Let's not pretend like you're just going to vote for whoever you want and you're just going to continue about your life. Like if Trump is as bad as some of these uh, people are saying and uh, Project 2025 is as disturbing as I think it is, it's going to mess with you. You're going to have to also reap those consequences. Me and you, we in the same boat. You know what I'm saying? So like that's why. In my opinion, I need to try to sway people. I'm, I'm not ashamed to say that. I We're having this conversation so we can build each other. I'm not just trying to talk to you just because I'm bored, which, I mean, sure, you know, whatever. But at the same time, if I could teach you something, you could teach me, then let's do that. You know, if, if you see that I'm making an ill-informed decision, put me on game. You know what I'm saying? I'm open and willing to learn. But I need you to also be the same. Don't be stubborn like, no, I'm, I'm going to, you know, because I don't like hair. Like, I get that. But we in the same boat here. And we got to deal with whatever is the outcome together for four long years. That's a long time. I'm going to be like, what, 43 or no, 41. So it's, it's not just I'm going to vote and then never have to think about it again, unfortunately. And this idea, I think a lot of people, and this is where the debate comes down to, I don't see voting as a declaration of faith. It is not my shahada, right? It is something pragmatic and practical that I do. I, I You know, the, the line that uh, Ole Yemi Olegurin and others have used very eloquently, which is you're basically choosing your weakest opponent. We don't like either of them, but I want the weaker person in office, the person I can influence, pressure, lobby, move. Mm -hmm. that let, 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 let me ask you, let me ask AOC you. and Cory Bush. I think Cory Bush said it on upfront with you just the other day. 
from a from a moral perspective, nobody wants to vote for the genociders. Mm -hmm. From a strategic perspective, where are you going to have more luck in the future pushing? But, but do you have no moral non-starters? I mean, I because I, I, I get that argument, right? Which is, look, they're all genociders. They're all imperialists. They're all neoliberals. Yeah. They're all corporate candidates. Whatever. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I do have morals, but I do have moral lines. But I I I, I hate the way. I'm sorry. I'm going to be very unpopular here. I do not like the way that people have just suddenly woken up in 2024 and said, now it's all about morality. What about all the previous elections? Hmm. Muslims voted for Bill Clinton happily in 2000 and in 92 and 96. In 96, Bill Clinton was presiding over the deaths of hundreds of thousands of children in Iraq. People, UN officials were calling that genocide. Madeleine Albright was like, whatever, right? It's worth it. Yeah, but, but, you, but you can't say, well, you, you made the wrong choice before, so you have That's to- That's not a wrong choice. choice. It's about every American president to quote Norm Chomsky as a war criminal who should be at Nuremberg. If right, that's but, but, but don't vote at all. Some, so, so, don't so, vote so, at all then. So, so, for example, if, if, if Kamala Harris right now yeah. were to have the right position on Palestine, if yeah. she were to have yeah. the right position on yes. Lebanon, if she were yes. to say, not only do I want to condition yes. aid, I'm going to suspend aid. Yes. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to say that we need, uh, we need yeah. to end ethno states everywhere. If she yes. did all those right things. If, if, if she were had a more progressive tax vision, yeah. if she had a different position on Frank, if she if she okay. were basically your check the box, I love yes. all these things, but she believed fundamentally that being Muslim is wrong, or she fundamentally believed that women were inferior, or she fundamentally yeah. believed. What's your question? What's your question, Mark? Could you not say, hey, that's a moral non starter for me, so, so I can't vote? So, so my problem there is honestly, in my opinion, I am not endorsing these people i am not choosing to marry these people and, and to just live in metro you know just just you know uh my whole life with them no i just need them to go in there and do what i what i'm voting them for and it's not going to be 10 out of 10 everything that i want it's going to be some things that I disagree. It's going to be some things I do agree. And with the options that I do have, I have to make that decision. I can't. It's, it's not like a build a bear where you get to like, you know, just plug in what you want. And like, that's a candidate you get like, like, no, it's not a build a candidate. Unfortunately, the, the two institutions, the Republican and the Democratic Party, they Throw up whoever they want in front. And unfortunately, we have to choose between those two um, for now. Hopefully we can get that changed in my lifetime. But it's 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 going to be some pros and cons. It's going to be some give and take. Unfortunately, like Harris, she she wouldn't be my fifth pick out of all the Democratic people who ran before. She wouldn't be my 10th pick. I would rather have Andrew Yang as president before harris but unfortunately that's not how the cookie crumbled and that's just my two options so that's that's my Mark, answer it's not a referendum right it's not brexit if you're telling me i'm going on november 5th to say whether i like harris or don't like harris i'm voting don't like if you're saying mm -hmm. i'm going to the referendum to say should we support kamala harris or not support kamala harris i'm gonna say not support because she's not done on gaza that is not what we're voting on. We're voting on a binary choice. The other guy is Trump. You cannot wish Trump away. What bothers me is the disingenuousness of some activists who just talk about Harris as if this is a referendum on Kamala Harris. Mm, it is I not. It is a choice. And if George Bush Sr. was on the other choice, I'd say, let's do it. Let's punish the Dems. Put Bush Sr. in for four years. We can tolerate Bush Sr. for four years. He might even be better on the Middle East, George Bush Sr. But that is not the choice. The other choice is an unhinged, racist, white supremacist, narcissistic, <laughs> mentally unbalanced, anti-Muslim, anti-Jewish guy who should be nowhere near a school board, let alone nuclear weapons, who's going to escalate the genocide in Gaza, who's probably going to start a war with Iran, who, who knows what he's going to do in, in other parts of the world, and who at home, by the way, at mm -hmm. home, is going to undermine the democracy that allows us to speak out for Muslims and Palestinians and Arabs. These guys have a project to shut down all pro-Palestinian journalism activists. What we're doing right now is going to be under threat in 2025. I know a lot of people don't want to hear this. Oh, man, you're hi this is hyperbole. You're exaggerating. You're fear -mongering. No, no. This is what they are advertising to us. When I said in 2019, Trump loses, he won't leave. He'll cause a riot. People said, you're exaggerating. That's exactly what he did. Take these people seriously and literally. Don't take them as jokers. To go back to the point about the entertainment section of HuffPost, when these white supremacists and these fascists and Stephen Miller and General Michael Flynn and Steve Bannon, when they say what they're going to do, they are going to do it.
So, okay, fair enough. So we, we have to run, but it sounds like what I'm hearing you say is it's not, you're, you're not, you're not against this in general as an idea. It's, it's the unique and particular, no, it's circumstance particular of choice. I'm no, telling I mean, you, it's, it's, it's if George Bush strong. Sr. was the Republican candidate, I would probably be saying, yes, let's do it. Get rid of the Dems, teach them a lesson, put the Republicans in for four years. That is not the choice. And honestly, I, I forget, I probably said this a, a while ago uh, when Joe Biden was still running. Um, I would have loved to vote Republican if they had a competent person. Like, let me... Hey, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay. I I I I can't think of one now, but I'm I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure there is a Republican person that I would vote for. Like Vivek is too slimy. Ron DeSantis is like a mini Trump. Trump is is Trump. Uh, maybe Nikki Haley. That there, there you go. Nikki Haley, I would have voted for her. Hands down. Quick. I would rather have her than a democratic party that continues to abuse their longtime voters. And that would have been a perfect time to be like, you know what? Like, like Mitty said, we can survive four, eight years of Nikki Haley, but not Trump. No, I, I'm not willing to risk it for the biscuit. I, 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 I'm not a betting man. Every time I bet on some things, I lose. <laughs> and I don't want to lose this. So I would rather vote Republican when it makes sense. If we want to do that protest vote or not vote or vote Green Party, then yeah, let's have that conversation. But unfortunately, right now, the Democratic Party, I, I would I would say, kind of festered, created, molded, allows someone like Trump to rise in a Republican Party and be as evil as he is because the Democratic Party continues to not deliver what the people need. They just get little breadcrumbs and people are starting to wake up to that. But no, we're sick and tired of that. That's what it is. But unfortunately, we got to be a little bit more sick and tired until we can create better or more options. The choice is Trump and Harris. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just telling you the choice. I wish it wasn't this choice. But I, as a third party candidate, though, I can tell you every four years they say, if it weren't Bush, if it were. No, if it were, see, that's, I don't, I think that's sorry, Mark. I don't agree with that. Wait, no, People, this is no, a fact. no, 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 every no. Four no. Years, on, that. Hey, every four years I'm told Every four years I'm told, I'm told no. the sky is falling with George W. Bush. The sky is no. falling with George H.W. No. Bush. I'm going to disagree with anybody Mark. else. I'm going to give you an example. Let's go back to. No, I, and, and I said this before, it's like the little boy who cries wolf. Every, or I don't want to say every, but when I was, you know, legal age of voting, I would hear it all the time. The Republican Party is a threat to democracy. The Democratic Party is a threat to democracy. It just keeps going back and forth and back and forth. And at some point, you just get used to it. It just becomes the norm. And, and you're you're just like, all right yeah okay cool all right i got you you know like you can stop telling me that because i already know what you're gonna say but when it actually becomes a threat and you can read that threat yourself they just make it public they are unashamed of what they want to do they made it public now we're trying to cry wolf and no everyone's like man we'll we'll, we'll survive it bro like eh, it's not gonna be nothing I hope <laughs> if Trump wins, I just hope it's all just for show and we could just laugh at it and make some good content. But if it's not, if it's not, I'm blaming you. <laughs> I'm going to blame you. All right. Like, let's just be clear. Don't don't be mad at me when I start pointing fingers at you. <laughs> 2008, Barack Obama ran against John McCain. Right. Yes. John McCain famously went out of his way. I don't think he did enough, but to say, oh, this man's not an Arab. He's a good person. Remember that John McCain? Yes. The voter. Yes. Right? It was like the bare minimum. I still think it was a little racist, but people love John McCain for doing that. Barack Obama did not call John McCain a fascist. John McCain did not call Barack Obama a communist who he's going to lock up and imprison. Right. 
Today, Barack Obama talks about my friend John McCain. So let's, you know, the, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff did not say John McCain was a fascist to his core. John McCain's chief of staff did not come out and say he loves Hitler. I mean, let's just be real here. Donald yeah, Trump, but I'm saying it's yeah. Donald Trump is very different to any previous Republican candidate who has come along in our lifetimes. Let's not normalize. Trump is an outlier for sure. I, I think it would be dishonest to say otherwise. My, my point is that in 2008, I did not vote for Barack Obama. I voted for uh, McKinney and... Uh, yeah. And, and the and, world, by the way, the world would not have fallen in if McCain had won. But we, we were told it was, but we were told it would. Is my point. We were I'm told. Not sure that, I'm not sure that's true. I mean, of course, party operatives are always going to say that. But we, but this is not party operatives, right? People keep telling. I said yesterday, some a friend of mine. Well, you know, the people are saying he's a fascist. Oh, this is Democratic Party shill propaganda. Robert Paxton, America's preeminent scholar of fascism, is not a Democratic Party shill. He's a historian of fascism who spent ten years saying Trump's not a fascist. Now he says. Trump's a fascist. Sorry, fascist. it's fascism, right? This is not <laughs> propaganda. This is not fear mongering. This is objective reality. And let me just say one last thing on the Green Party because people confuse my position. If you don't live in a swing state, I have no issue with voting green. I might vote green. Why not? You got nothing to lose. The dumb system means if I live in New York or you California, you vote doesn't count anyway. If yeah, your vote doesn't count anyway, that's a whole separate discussion about the inane, inanity of American democracy as it is. If you live in Alabama, Mississippi, if you live in uh, you know Massachusetts, Colorado. New York, California, <laughs> vote however you like. Don't vote. Who cares? It doesn't matter. If you live in a swing state and you can determine the fate of the country and the world, think long and hard about the choice. The if you still want to vote, world. Go, for, go for it. But at least, man, your vote <laughs> could determine the fate of the country and the world <laughs> i'm just saying i'm just saying bruh we need to make sure we're making a smart decision here all right i'm i apologize for yelling at you but i need you guys to understand this ain't no game bro because politics will fuck with you bruh i'm just saying think through the consequences don't tell me that by voting green or oh, i have clean hands or I have no responsibility for what comes next. That's bullshit. We're all <laughs> citizens of this country. We're all going to have to live with the consequences of the decision that happens, whether it ends up being Harris or Trump. That's all I'm asking. Let's have an honest debate. And, and right there, he said it best. There's no such thing as clean hands. There's no such thing as as being able to sleep well at night and, and, and having, you know, no worries or, or whatsoever. Like, no. Like I said before, if you don't fuck with politics, politics will still fuck with you. That's simple. And you need to remember that because like I like I can't stress enough. We're all in this same boat and we all need to survive. Just because I might vote for Harris or Green Party and you vote for whoever, at the end of the day, we still gotta pay these ridiculous taxes. We still have to pay these extreme prices. We still have to work these low quality, low wage jobs. We still have to pay this high ass rent together. So let's just try to keep each other in mind when we're voting. That's all I'm saying, baby. <laughs> Fair enough. I love talking to you and I wish we could talk more, man. Um, in the <laughs> and that was it. Um, but once again, guys, like, let's just try to make sure we have a clear understanding of what's at stake. Please educate yourself. Don't just go off of, you know, t uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook, or even YouTube. Not, e not e even my own videos, even my own channel. I need you to make sure you're well-rounded, educated, and just understand at the end of that election, the results are going to fall on my hands, your hands, and the Democratic Party if Trump wins. It's all of our fault. Some say can say it's just uh, Harris's fault because she didn't say X, Y, or Z, or she didn't do A, B, and C. Understandable. Good conversation. Or it could be us because we're the ones casting our vote. And we know what the alternatives are, so it could be our fault. That's a good conversation to have. So let's just make sure we're not deceived on how this is going to work out. If Trump gets into office, you're going to be screwed even if you voted green. Trust me, he doesn't care if you voted for Green Party or the Dems. He's going to screw you over one way or another. So once again, if you guys disagree with anything that I said, 
Let me know in the Discord down below. I do have an open door policy so we can continue this one-on-one -on -one talk. Or let me know how you guys feel in the comments down below. And like always, let's have a conversation.